and we will see what are the problems in the text mode and how we can improve that. And also we will understand one of the most important topic of the file handling which is serialization and deserialization. So when we hit shift enter and check the straight source txt, we have file lines inside the file, very big file. So let's say your RAM is 8 GB, but the file is of 80 GB. So if you try to load without any parameters, it will crash your system. So this is how you can use this and it's really amazing. It's really fantastic. So flexible, but so powerful. So now you just imagine that you have coded a file and you made that file binary and you transferred that binary file to some other system, some other server. And there you are able to use the same class which you have written here. And that is the real use case of this pickle file. Welcome back to the day 16 of the 100 days of hell with Python algo trading. So in previous session, we have learned about file handling. We have seen the type of files and also the type of modes we use in the file handling like read mode, write mode, append mode. And we have seen some use cases. So today we will continue with that only and we will see what are the problems in the text mode and how we can improve that. And also we'll understand one of the most important topic of the file handling, which is serialization and deserialization and then we will understand pickling with the help of pickling we can convert any python object into a byte stream or we can say a binary file and we will also understand the unpickling because these are one of the most important topic of the python file handling because we will always be using the pickling and unpickling so let's get started with today's topic so previously we have seen that how we can use context manager to handle the different kind of files right and we have also seen that we have used to read and write to the files so let me quickly show it again so let's say what we can do let's create a new file how we can achieve that we have to use the with keyword so with open and here we'll give the file name so trades dot uh, let's say txt and here if the file is not existing we have to uh, type w for the write mode and then we can give the file name. So let's say as f dot write. Now you can give your text you want to write, right? This session is for file handling. And when I hit shift enter, here you can see that in day 16, there is no file with the name trades.txt. So when I hit shift enter, we have a new file here with the name trade.txt. And when I click on that, we have the data inside that right now let's say we want to write multiple lines so what we can do we can just copy it paste here uh, multiple times and we know that we want all these lines in new lines so for that what we can do we can write slash n and here also slash n and to differentiate between the lines i'll just give one two here it could be three four and five right so when we hit shift enter and check the straight source txt, we have file lines inside the file. So now let's do one more thing that in the next line, what I'll do, I'll try to read this file with the context manager. So what is happening here? This context manager first open the file and then in the buffer, we can perform our operations. It could be a read operation. It could be write operation, right? And after that, it automatically closed the file, right? So let's say I want to read this file. So what I'll do, I'll just write the same with and same the open and the file name. So it's straight.txt. Then here, instead of writing, I'll give a read mode as F. And now I can just give read. And now when I hit shift enter, it doesn't display anything because we have to print this. So I'll just print this. And now we can see the whole content. But the issue we have discussed already that it loads the whole file and sometimes we don't want that. So what we can do for that, we can just type the number of characters we want. And now when I hit shift enter, it will just display the 10 characters. So this is another smart method with the help of that. We can read a very big file. So let's say your RAM is 8 GB, but the file is of 80 GB. So if you try to load without any parameters, it will crash your system, right? So instead of that, what you can do, you can load that file in chunks, right? So what you do? You will just write 10, 10. So the buffer will load the file in the chunk of 10 characters. So now when I hit shift enter, it is loading 10 characters first, then the next 10. So here you might have one question that when you write this code, so why it is not starting from the initial position, right? Ideally it should be happen, but the buffer remembers your position. So it will load from the, the next index. So let's say 
after 10 it will load from 11 then again 21 and so on and so forth okay one more thing i'd like to explain you here that there are two functions one is tell and another is seek so with the help of tell you can know your current position so let's say if i write here print f dot tell and when you shift enter it will show you that currently you are at the 10th position and again let's say if i write it here and again here so you can validate your function right hit shift enter it will show us that first 10 20 30 40 with the help of tell you can know your current position so with the help of seek function you can navigate in your file anywhere so let's take an example so while you play any video on youtube you can see a, a cursor in below and you can move that anywhere so if you want to move from the one minute to five minute you can just pick that cursor or we can say pointer to five minutes so it will just take you there and you call that operation as seek so you are just seeking from the one minute position to five minute position right similarly here also you can move from one position to another position so let's say what i'll do here in the next line we'll write this then again what we can do we can print f dot read and uh, we can load the whole file for now okay now let's check the seek function so what i'll do f dot seek i want to go to the 10th position when i had shift enter it doesn't show anything i want to go to the 20th position and now i want to check that where i am right so first we'll check with that tell function that where we are so print and tell and now after seeking also we will check our position when i had shift enter uh, it shows me that okay so what we can do actually i'll just remove first add 10 here and now when i hit shift enter you can see that first it printed out 10 characters then it is showing us our current position then it will take us to the 20th position and after that if i try to again print the 10 characters what it will do it will print the next 10 characters and again you can print the next 10 so you can see that how we can use the seek and tell function so this is quite useful sometimes and have a understanding of this this was the seek during a read operation and now let's say i want to use seek during the write operations so let's take another cell and inside that what we will do we'll write something so, so first i'll write uh, f dot and here let's say i want to write testing seek function and now when i hit shift enter and check the trades.txt file it will show us the testing seek function now let's say i will write another line here this is the second line and i'll just change it to like i'll add one and here the next line so slash n and two dot so we'll get two lines right so when i hit shift enter let's use the seek function here i'll use seek and i'll go let's say zero now i will write the second line so what happens if i write without this i'll show you again we will get two lines and you can see here now let's use the seek function here so what we'll do i'll add seek i'll just mention the zero here it will write this content the first line testing seek function then what it will do currently the cursor is at this position right let's say inside the buffer but this seek is forcing it back to go here at this line one right and now it will write this line again what i'll do here i'll just remove the slash n and now when i hit shift enter you will see that this line will be replaced by this file correct so let's check this and it is done so that is the real use of seek function like you can test this as per your requirement and, and let us know if you have any doubt in that now let's take another example of this seek so what i'll do here instead of zero i'll add 10 what it means first it will write this line and then the seek function will take me to the 10th position and then it will write this line correct so let's hit shift enter and check the file again so you'll see that first it written the whole line then again the seek function take the cursor to this 10th position and then it will write again the second line so this is how the seek function works you can use it as per your requirement and let us know if you face any issue now the issue is that with this kind of operation we can only deal with this string data type with the other data types we cannot use that now here we have two issues first with this read and write mode we cannot work with the binary file the first second is that it is only suitable for the string and data type we cannot use tupper dictionary here so that's a drawback of this and in order to resolve that issue 
what we can do we have to tweak this little bit and let's do that what we will do here let me take the screenshot of uh, something so what i'll do i'll quickly uh, transfer image that is binary file right so i'll just quickly take a screenshot here you get the idea right this is a screenshot and this is a binary file let's go back to the code we'll try to operate uh, open and i'll give the file name that is screenshot yes png and and okay now i'll add again with open here i'll add the name of the screenshot dot png open in the read mode as let's say f dot read we can print this right generally we print the read function i'll print and hit shift and enter and it says it says utf8 codec cannot decode byte 0x89 in position 01 invalid start byte so that means with the help of these simple read we cannot open the binary files so now what we can do to open this file for that what we can do we have to use another mode so i'll just copy and paste it on the next line add a new line of code and here instead of read i'll write here read binary and i'll remove this for now and while reading what we have to do we have to write also so with open and now i'll give a new name to this so it will be a completely new file so i'll write here new screenshot dot and here we are writing right because we are creating a new file so read binary and we can give here like as g it doesn't matter right then what we can do first we have opened this read binary right so we have to read this file so i'll write f dot read and simultaneously we will write on this also so i will give here g dot write hope you are getting my point first we have opened this file in the read binary mode we are reading this file and simultaneously we are writing also right so now when i hit shift enter we can see that we have a new file with the name new screenshot and when we open this we have exactly same screenshot so this is how you can work with the binary files correct hope you are getting my point and actually you just have to practice this and in a very short span of time you will be very good at this so just give you enough time to practicing python ultimately it will help you a lot in algo trading so first we have resolved our first problem that uh, we cannot work with the binary files so with the help of this read binary and uh, write binary mode we can perform operations on the binary files now the second problem with this text mode was that we cannot write any other data type except string and uh, let me show you how for example uh, let's take this file and uh, trade.txt so what we will do we'll write with open and trade.txt let's take in write mode so then what we'll do we'll try to write so okay here we have to add as f and let's write f dot write and let's say i'm writing five as an integer right when i hit shift enter it shows me type error which says write argument must be string not int so forcefully i have to make this integer a string and when i run this it works fine and let's check this file it says five and actually this is not a good way this is really problematic let's say we already have this five inside and if i want to let us perform some action so five uh, let's take in this read mode let's say i want to add another integer with this so when i hit shift enter and it again says can only concatenate string not integer so that's the big problem so let's try with a dictionary with the name d is equals to let's say name is equals to leap and we can say and let's say city singapore and we can also write country i can say bharat in bracket you can write india optional so it seems good okay so when i hit showing me error invalid syntax before go to add comma here okay let's try to add this dictionary to the file so what i'll do i'll open file name uh, trade dot txt and write mode as f and then what i'll do i'll write f dot write i'll just pass this dictionary so d and now when i hit shift enter it says same arguments must be string not dictionary so that's the problem so for that so to write this dictionary 
what i need to do i need to forcefully change my dictionary to a string so i'll change it to a string and now when i write it works and we can even check this let me print it out so i'll and read and i'll just remove this not required and we can print this so print and what it says arguments must be okay uh, we have to remove this d not required yeah now we can see that we have a dictionary now we start with the most important topic of the day that is serialization and deserialization and quick link these three topics are really very very important and you will be always using them and now let me tell you so what is the purpose and use case of serialization and deserialization so with the help of this we can convert any object to a form in which we can easily store these and we can transmit them so the purpose of serialization and deserialization to convert objects to a format that can be easily stored or transmitted and then reconstruct them back into their original form and the use case of serialization is that saving and loading of trading configuration files logging trade activities and transmitting data from different components of a trading system and now let's discuss the purpose and use case of pickling so with the help of pickling we can convert python objects to a byte stream or vice versa which is efficient for storing and transmitting binary data and when it comes to the use case we can use this in saving and loading of complex objects such as trained models large data sets or trading strategies that needs to be preserved across sessions so enough of talking and now let's dive into the coding examples so you can see here that serialization is the process of converting python data types to json format and deserialization is the process of converting json to python data types this is the simplest definition and you just need to know this nothing else means we will simply convert any data type it can be string dictionary list to a json format and again in the process of deserialization we'll convert back from that json format to our data type right so now the question is what is json json is nothing but javascript on notation and it's exactly same like not exactly but it's almost similar to the python dictionaries you can see here this is one of the example of json and here we have the key and values so you can relate it with the python dictionaries almost same uh, right so you can see here we have this key then the values inside and inside that we have the nested dictionaries right and also we can have list it's same almost same right so now we proceed with the next which says uh, javascript on notation so let's start the serialization using json module correct let's say we have a list so i'll give it l is equals to and we can say this is a list of dictionaries so generally in trading we have this kind of format so inside that we have the record of two trades so in the first dictionary and we can say the first item of list it is and the second item that is second trade correct so now what i'll do i'll just take it below so you can easily understand so now you can see that we have a list inside that we have two items and those items are dictionaries and inside the dictionary we have the trading record so let's say first we have trade id so trade id and this is the let's say t uh, 3214 correct then we have the symbol so you can have symbol let's say it is apple so a p l then let me correct this spelling symbol and then we can have let's say price so for price we have uh, let's say 100 an integer then for the volume we can give it like just for the example 1 2 3 4 and i think it's enough for example and same we can have another trade in this next dictionary and which is this next item of the list so i'll just copy and paste and i'll just increment it to 3 and symbol we can change to microsoft price we can take 110 and volume also we can just change from 1 to 2 correct so when i hit shift enter and try to access the list we have the value right now let's try to convert this to a json so what we can do the same process so with open file name so let's create a new file so here you can see there is no file with the name json or we can say 
trade log trade log dot json and will and the mode will be right correct and as f and here what we can do we have to use the json module here so for that we need to import here import json and then when we go here we have to use the json module so json dot dump so whenever you have to convert from your python data types to json you have to dump right you will be dumping your python content to json so for that you have to use this dump method and inside that we have two parameters so the first will be the content so here we have the list so l and then the file name so file name is f correct this one right now just hit shift enter and you will see that you have a new file with the name trade log dot json and when you open this you will see the content so that's the power of serialization correct and let's try to read this file so what i'll do i'll add code cell and then same uh, with open a uh, file name file name here is trade log dot json and now i'm opening this in read mode so read as f and then f dot read and just hit shift enter and you have to print this also so i'll print the read print and when you hit shift enter you can see that we have the data and now the most important part is that previously with the simple text context manager we were able to convert from dictionary to strings but we cannot get back from the string to dictionary so here the main thing is that we can convert from a dictionary to a json and again we can convert that back to dictionary so let's try to check the type of this so what i'll do i'll write type here and when i check it gives me a string oh now we get the string and yes we have made a mistake so when you perform the serialization you are using the dump method but when you perform the opposite when you perform the deserialization means you are converting from a json to python data type you have to use the load module right so what you can do here simply you just write json dot load and the file name that's it so i'll just remove this for now and when you hit shift enter you get nothing because you have to print while performing the read function so print you get the list of dictionaries back and now you can also check the type of this so when you check the type you will see that this is a list so that's the biggest benefit of using the json module right now let's try the same with the dictionary and what we can do here we can just take this because this is a dictionary itself so i'll just convert it like d is equals to a dictionary and inside that we will pass this correct we can do that right we have already read about it previously so when i hit shift enter it says me yeah because for that we have to provide the trade one the key right so i'll give trade one and then a colon and again for this also it will be like trade two and colon two and colon now when i hit shift enter and if i try to access this we get the dictionary so now let's try the same thing with this so what we'll do we'll write with open then we can give a file name let's say dictionary and uh, dictionary example dot json and we have to write right so we'll open in the right mode and as f now we need to use the json module so json dot dump and what we are dumping we are dumping this dictionary which is equals to d so i'll just write d and then the file name correct so when i hit shift enter you observe here that a new file will be created so let me hit shift enter and this is the file and when we check this we have the dictionary of dictionary inside that so let's try to read it from here i'll add another code cell and the same i'll just copy this here and in the read mode and instead of dumb now we are loading so loading and we'll just change from d to f because we are reading and we also have to print this so i'll print it and when we hit shift enter we can see that we have a dictionary and we can even check the type of this so i'll write this and the type of this is the dictionary and now i think that you are able to understand that what is the importance of json and now actually almost all the apis are using json format and json is understood by almost all the programming languages so all the apis mostly are built in the json format so that we can easily fetch and dump and load the data so that's the use of this and and even you can go right now to the google and check any api it will be in the json format most of them right 
So you can say that when we use the dump method, it is serialization. And when we use load, it is deserialization, right? Now let's take an example of this tuple. So what happens in the tuple? We have a problem. And for now, I don't know why, but we need to find the answer. If you have any answer for that, just let me know why it is happening like this. So let's say we have a tuple and what I'll do, I'll just convert, uh, let's say this dictionary, the same dictionary to a tuple. Let's take another example for that. So what we'll do here, let's create a tuple. So tuple could be T is equals to inside that we can have a string. So let's say trade ID. So one, two, three, four. Then we can have symbol. So it's a string apple and we can also have the price and the integer. So hundred. Correct. So this is a tuple. And when I try to access T, we can get, we can even check the type of this. So it says it's a tuple. And now let's try to serialize and deserialize tuple. So what we'll do the same with open the file name. We can give now tuple dot JSON then and we are writing so in write mode as f and we'll write here now json dot load and no we are dumping right so dump and the content which is t and the file name which is f so now when we hit shift enter you will observe here that a new file is created with the name double dot json so let me do that and we have a new file and now let's try to access this so what i'll do here I'll try to read this. So with open and let's take this here and and instead of write, we have read mode and here write the file name and just changed from dump to load and give a print function here. So when we check, we have tuple. But now when we check the type of this TYP, we have list. So that's the issue. And that's your question that why we are getting the list when we deserialize a tuple. Okay, that's the question of the day. And let me know in the comments and we can discuss this further in the next sessions. And now let's move to the next topic, which is serializing and deserializing the custom objects. So far, we are using the old inbuilt classes and functions. But now let's say if we create our custom objects, from the classes and when we try to serialize and deserialize them what happens okay so let's do that let's create a class here so what we'll do we'll create class and trade we can give any name so let's say this is trade system okay and inside that we have a constructor in it then of course self and we can have a trade id so trade id we can have symbol inside that and also we can have let's say price uh, volume correct so let's self dot trade id is equals to trade id then we have self dot symbol is equals to symbol then we have self dot price is equals to price then we have self dot volume uh, is equals to volume correct so now what i'll do i'll create an object for this class so class and not class let's give it the name obj for now obj and trade correct uh, trade system and then here we have trade id so let's say let's say a string so t and then symbol so we can have apple then price let's say 100 and volume let's say 1000 correct so when i hit shift enter it says takes no arguments because we forgot to add underscore here and now it's working fine correct so what we can do here let me try to access the attribute of this class so obj trade dot and let's say price and when i shift enter i get the price and when i check the symbol i get the symbol that is apple so for now it's working fine but now what if i want to serialize this object so what we can do here so for that as per the process what we do i create a new cell here let's say first we have to import json so json then with open and let's give a file name obj.json and inside that in write mode as correct then what we'll do will json dot dump and we give the object name that is obj trade then the file name right so now when i hit shift enter it says object of type trade system is not json serializable 
but the file is created here. So when we check this, there is nothing. So now how we can resolve this issue? So for that, we cannot directly serialize any object here, at least with this method. So for that, we have to use another method. Very simple, very easy. What we can do here, we need to use another method. And that method is, we just need to tell the Python that I want to display like that, that it should be showing that the trade ID is like this, a string, the trade ID is, and then the trade ID, correct? Again, with the symbol, you can say with the symbol, and then it will display a symbol and the price and volume. So in that way, the good, uh, beautiful looking string, we want to display. So what we will do here, we'll just go here and uh, create a function. So define, and the name we can say, show object we are creating this function for this object and in that we will tell that how we want to display our class attributes so now inside that we will pass the object so obj trade correct and then here we will return with the formatted string and i can just uh, write like uh, the trade ids inside the function obj trade dot uh, trade id correct then again with the comma, I can show that for the symbol, for the symbol, and again function and obj trade dot. You can call this symbol so s y m b o l, and you can give another comma and add the price, and again function obj trade dot, and the volume is and the volume is, and now few more things we need to add here is that we can say a condition statement with if is instance. So this checks whether this is an object of this class or not, right? So we'll pass the object here, object, and then the class name. So class name is trade system, correct? And then I'll put inside here. Now simply while dumping this uh, object, you need to write the name of object. So that is object obj trade, then the file name. And now in the last, you need to add a parameter, let's I default and then the name of the function. So we need to call the function here. I'll write the show object. And now when you hit shift enter, you can see that it has been done. And when you open this file, obj.json, so here it is. And when you check, you can see that it is displaying as we wanted the trade ID, then the apple and hundred and thousand. Let's try to again validate this. So what we'll do? We'll go here and change these values, right? This trade ID. So now I'll just make it 87654. Apple, we can replace with uh, BTC. This was the price. So price, we can easily target this. And then volume, of course, it will be in trillions. So I'll just write a string and I can say 100 trillion, right? So when I hit shift enter and again, I run this, you will see that the data has been changed as we wanted. And now one more thing you can imagine that possibility with this idea. Let's check the content. And you can see here that it has been changed. The trade ID, BTC, price and the volume that is $100 trillion. So this is how you can use this. And it's really amazing. It's really fantastic. So flexible, but so powerful. Now, if you want to deserialize this, what you can do the same. First, we need to import JSON. Then what we'll do uh, with open, with open, then the file name, which is obj.json and in the read mode, then as f, correct. And again, json.load, of course. And here you have to give the name of file, right? And then what you can do, you can just print this. So I'll add print function here. And when you print, you have this here. So one more thing you can do here is that why we are doing this? Because now we want to validate that whether we are getting back the object or not, right? So now if I print the type of, now when we shift enter, it says us a string, means the problem is back. Now we are able to serialize the object to a JSON, but we are not able to deserialize. Means we are able to, but we are not getting back the object. So that's the problem. So in order to resolve that issue, we have another super important concept that is pickling. So 
Pickling is the process whereby a Python object hierarchy is converted into a byte stream. It means we are converting an object into a binary file or a byte stream. So unpickling is the inverse operation, right? Whereby a byte stream or you can say from a binary file or bytes like object is converted back into a object hierarchy. So that's the simple definition. So in simple words, you can say we are converting an object into a binary file and in the unpickling, we are converting back from a binary file to a object of Python. So that's very simple. Let me show you again. So what we'll do here, we'll simply take this class, correct, and I'll paste it here. So let's follow the same process. So what I'll do, I'll just run this cell, shift enter, shift enter, and now let's write the code for the pickle dump. Import JSON, then with open, and here we can give a file name, let's say pickle and demo, and then uh, the JSON, so JSON, and now we'll write. So in write mode as F, correct? Then what we'll do, we'll just simply dump this object to a JSON uh, binary file. So what we'll do, we'll write uh, JSON dot uh, dump, and similarly, the name of object, so I'll write here, object trait, then the file name, that is F, correct? So now you observe at this uh, palette, so when I hit shift enter, you will see that we have an error, but pickle underscore demo dot JSON. And when we check this, it is empty. Now you just pause the video. We made a mistake. You just need to highlight that mistake without seeing the next part. You just have to pause the video and just type in the comment. What is the issue here? What is the mistake you have made here? Let me show you what we did. We just followed the simple write process, but we know that we are working with the binary file right now. So what we'll do, we'll just add a B here, which says write binary. And now when we hit shift enter, it says object of type trade system is not JSON serializable. Now what we can do, we can just import pickle. So instead of JSON, we'll write pickle and with open the file name. So let's say we are, let's say we'll write a pickle here, a pickle, and uh, let's say demo dot pkl. Make sure that you are writing this as dot pkl because in JSON it was dot JSON and here it is dot pkl. Then I'll just write w and as p, right? Instead of JSON, I'll just pickle dot dump. And then the name of the object here. So here it is obj trade. So I'll just copy and paste here and the file name that is F, correct? So now when I try to run this, so I'll hit shift enter and it says me write argument must be str not bytes. Now it's your responsibility to pause the video and think that what is the issue happening here? Just think and type your answer in the comments. So what will happen here, that was okay. But now we are dealing with the binary files. So we have to just change this right to write binary and now when I hit shift enter, you will see that a new file has been created with the name pickle.demo.pkl. If I try to open this file, it will show me in warning that the file is not displayed in the text editor because it is either a binary or uses an unsupported text encoding. So it will not display here. So what we can do, instead of opening the file, we can simply use this. So what I'll do, I'll go here and I'll copy and paste this here, load, and this is a dump code. So I'll just paste it here. And now why I'm using this pickle again and again, because in a single file, if you use this once, it is okay. But now this pickle file will be used in some other file or some other system completely different. So that time you will have to use this import pickle, then only it will work, right? So that's why just simple convention. So now as we are reading this file, what I will do, I will just change from write to read. And here, from dump to load, same in JSON. And here, I'll just remove this here and I'll just write F because we are going to read the file F. So now when I hit shift enter, it doesn't display me anything because it is an object and to print, we have to print. And now when I hit shift enter, it displays me the address of the object. So you know that now what we can do, we can save this in some other variable. So I'll just save in like, let's say, is equals to pickle 
and now when I hit shift enter, now you can use this pickle file same like we use an object. So what I'll do here when I hit P dot, it will display me all the attributes of the class. So now you just imagine that you have coded a file and you made that file binary and you transferred that binary file to some other system. So some other server and there you are able to use the same class which you have written here. And that is the real use case of this pickle file. Okay, first let me show you the, all the data. So I'll write price, then the symbol, then the trade ID, and then the P dot volume, correct? And we have to print this. So I'll just go here, print, and I'll copy this, print, and again, print, correct? So now when I shift enter, it displays me all the value. Now to double check this, what we can do, we can just change this value. So instead of one, two, three, four, I'll make it four, three, two, one. And ETH, I'll make it BTC. And price, I'll make it 125,000. And, and volume, I'll make it 100 trillion dollars. So now when I hit shift enter and run these again, now when I access the value, it is changed. So means it is working fine. And that is how we can create the pickle file. Now the question arises that where should we use pickle and where should we use JSON? So pickle lets the user to store data in binary format and JSON lets the user store data in human readable text format. So you can say that whenever you want to store the data in text format and in human readable format, you can use a JSON when you're dealing with APIs. So in APIs, you have to read the data. So that time you can use JSON when you want to store your data, transmit somewhere else, you can use pickle so in like machine learning models when we run big model and there we are consuming a lot of resources like cpu memory and time and you want that the output should be stored somewhere right so what you can do you can just store that output in your pickle file so that you don't have to use your resources again we'll be using this pickle a lot when we'll be learning machine learning and ai trading we'll see you in the next uh, video that is day 17 but for now your responsibility is to just go and watch the video again, clearly understand all the concepts and remember them. And again, after that, just attempt all the multiple choice questions and then you have to move to the task. And finally, you have to create the mini project which we have shared on the GitHub repository. So for now, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye, take care, have a nice day.